welcome to the Mindful Melbourne Maker Knitting Podcast. My name is Kath and I'm a knitter living in Melbourne, Australia. This is my YouTube channel where I share all about the things that I've been knitting and making and um, show you everything that's going on. You can find me on Instagram as Mindful Melbourne Maker and on Ravelry as Kath S. Martin. This is my fourth mini episode in my series for the West Knits Mystery Knit Along season in 2024. So this is a video all about clue four and finishing the Go Go Dynamo shawl. So um, if you haven't seen the first three episodes, maybe go and watch those. They're little short episodes talking all about those clues. And I also show uh, a previous MCAL or Mystery Knit Along shawl from West Knits that I have knit over the years in each of those episodes. And so I'll also do that again today. So thanks for joining me. If you do like this video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on future videos. So today is the 4th of November and I have finished the Go Go Dynamo shawl, um, the 2024 mystery knit along from Stephen West. And it was massive and a lot of fun and I'm really glad to have it off the needles. Um, so we'll talk through clue four and also finishing off that shawl today. Um, but in each of the previous episodes, as I said, I've actually shown a previous mystery knit along um, shawl of, from Stephen West that I've knit. The first one was the twists and turns uh, shawl and the second one that I showed was shawlography. And the third one that I showed in the last episode was Geogradient. And so the only other mystery knit along shawl that I have knit from West Knits, uh, I've actually showed pretty recently in my podcast, but I thought I'd show it today anyway, just to sort of round things out. And so the other mystery knit along shawl from Stephen West, from West Knits that I have knit before is the Starflake. And that's this shawl here. So I did show this very recently on my podcast um, because I only finished it a couple of days before this mystery knit along commenced. So this one's a really recent um, finished object and I have already worn it a number of times. This was a really, really fun one to make and I think it was from 2019. The two yarns, it's two colors of yarn. The two yarns that I used were Woolen Works um, in the Barbie colorway and three cats yarn in the graffiti colorway and it has lots of lovely geometric shapes and brioche with increases and decreases and just overall a really great shawl and very reminiscent of this year's shawl in that it also only used two colors so that was the starflake shawl so i won't say much more about that one only because i have shown it really recently on the podcast if you want to learn more about the Starflake shawl maybe go and have a look at I think my um, my most recent full podcast episode um, but yes yeah, so that that was the only other mystery knit along shawl from Stephen West that I've knit so um, we'll get we'll move on to the Go Go Dynamo shawl which is the shawl from this year and so uh, we clue for came out a week and a bit ago so it came out on the Thursday night for us in Australia and I had finished clue three I think the day before um, so I was ready to go and clue four came out and took us I think by surprise in the sense that we we knew that we would have to finish off the top of the shawl which is the first thing that we did in clue four but then we also had the addition of an optional border, extra border, which I did do. Um, so I'll show you what we have here. And what we have here is the finished shawl um, and it has been blocked. So it's the size that it will be. So that's it there. I'll also put in some footage of it um, as I'm talking about it as well. 
Um, and so just to recap, so my theme for this shawl, because I have a theme for each of my mystery knit along shawls that I knit during the mystery knit along season. My theme for this year was the Rings of Power, um, sort of Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power theme. If you watch that show, it's got a really strong um, uh, teal and kind of silver and white colours running throughout the entire show and that was what I really wanted to evoke with this shawl. So I used some really really lovely yarns from HodgePodge Skeins. So there's the, the label there and I used Teal Rific and the other colour was White Gold which is there. So Teal Rific and White Gold and those are the two the two yarns there so you can see that's a really beautiful deep teal color and that's a sort of variegated white and silver color and this is all I have left after I finished the shawl so I did write this down all the details for my shawl um, how I knit it what needles I use what which yarn I use the start and date um, start and end dates for each clue all of that information is in my Ravelry project page which is linked below but I think what I had left of the main color I use this as my main color I only had nine grams left of that out of two skeins and then in the contrast color I had about 30 about 30 grams I think it's in my project page um, but I had that as well and I also used um, Stellaris, uh, Kremke, Kremke Stellaris, which is there, in the colour silver and in pale gold. And those are those two um, iridescent metallic threads. So the silver and the pale gold. And I held those in different places through in my shawl throughout, just to give it that really... Um, sort of silvery sense of um, the sort of gold and the silver with the rings of power theme which I really enjoyed. So for um, clue four, so in clue three we had we had finished all of this and we had knit down to these um, wedges, wedges and then for clue four we picked up all along which is what what I thought we would do we picked up all along this edge here, which it, it's not a particularly neat pickup. When you pick it up, I know other people have spoken about this. Um, it doesn't give you an incredibly clean line, but you actually can't tell from far away. It's neat enough um, and it does sort of blend in. But if you get up really close, um, you can see it's a little bit that pickup is just a little bit messy with that raw edge. But if you're that close to my shawl that you can see that, then you're too close, in my view. <laughs> but um, we essentially picked up above these and we knit all of this section up the top. And it was a really, really fun section for Clue 4 because you were decreasing the whole way. So the stitch count was getting smaller and smaller and smaller, which is really unusual for an M cow from Stephen West, because usually you're getting, in clue four, you've got the really, really long rows and it's just getting really, really tiresome to kind of knit across those rows. But it was a really fun, tiny bobble section, which I've got there. And I held my silvery thread in with those tiny bobbles to give them a bit of a pop. And then we've got a slip stitch triangles section but we found in our chat group we talked about it because when I knit mine all I can see are little half squares and others can definitely see triangles so I think it depends on your yarn as to whether the, the triangle shapes jump out at you or whether it's more the sort of half square geometric shapes but either way it's really really pretty and you just repeat that again um, up to the top where you basically reduce down to no stitches and for each of the tiny bobble sections I held the silvery thread just to give it that little bit of shimmer and pop at the start 
So that was clue four and then once you finish that you could choose for that to be it, for that to be done and it, give, it gave you a pretty good size shawl. Not, not as deep as some of his others but it was a really a good size. I always go for the larger size because I think well I've knit this far I might as well knit a bit more. I really like really big large shawls and what else am I going to use the yarn for? I, I've got the yarn, I've got enough left over so I chose to do the optional additional border which saw us picking up along the bottom of our wedges so this was all an I-cord so we picked up along the I-cord more than 600 stitches <laughs> and we added on this absolutely beautiful border so it's a wavy border with stockinette in the contrast color and then these main color ridges are uh, reverse stockinette ridges and so you'll see that I held the contrast color and main color single for um, the, the first two and the next two and then the final two I held the silver thread with the contrast color and I held the gold thread with the main color just to give the edge a bit of a shimmer um, a bit of a shimmer on the border and I just really really love how that turned out now this was a slog it was more than 600 stitches by the time we finished it was around 640 ish I think um, and then it was of course an eye cord bind off of all of those stitches all the way along so for mine I just help held my main color I held my main color uh, just by itself and I bound off and that each row of the board of that border at 600 stitches each row was taking me about 40 minutes um, so you know it was quite a slog it took quite a long time the I-cord border I think it was taking some people kind of three three and a half hours it only took me about two and a bit hours um, but I do love an I-cord bind off I love it I get into a good rhythm I use um, a, a DPN or a or an interchangeable needle tip just the tip as my working needle in my right hand and it just zooms along um, doing it that way so that was the border so I'm all done and I'm super pleased because this is a whopping whopping shawl it's absolutely humongous it is huge and it was a massive amount of stitches to knit in only a month so I cast on on the 2nd of November and I cast no I cast on on the 3rd of October and I finished it on the 2nd of November so one day uh, short of a month um, which is a phenomenal amount but what it meant was this was pretty much all I knit on for the entire month of October which if you know me you know I am not a monogamous knitter I like to knit on lots of different things every day and so for me it really is quite a commitment of time and effort and really requires quite a lot of focus to just concentrate on one project so the thing that was absolutely critical and got me through this and spurred me along was the group chat. So a huge thank you to everyone in the group chat. Hello everyone. Um, it was such a fantastic group and I hope we keep this going in future years because it was just a great encouragement. There were some people that knit really quickly. There were other people who were taking their time. Um, there's so many different colors and styles um, and everyone just jumped in and helped help each other out and continues to help each other out with whether coming across little problems or tips and tricks or um, throwing in you know where you've seen a really a really great um, shawl on on Instagram or whatever chuck the photo in and it was just a lot of fun and a lot of encouragement and I look forward to over the next um, few weeks potentially months we're going to keep that chat going so that all of those people that are still um, knitting away on their shawls can still all chat about it and I can um, keep up with how everyone's going so a huge thank you to that group chat it was really really good uh, now with the the bind off something I would mention so I knit this on 3.75 um, millimeter needles which I think the pattern says 3.5 but I always go up the bind off I my working needle I used a four millimeter just to make sure that the I cord would be stretchy enough so I always 
tend to do that, go up. Um, now, there are some really interesting stats that somebody found around this shawl and popped in our group chat and it was someone on Facebook. Let me find the, um, let me find the group. So I was in some sort of group um, and the person that posted it was Freya Juniper 9. So just to attribute all of the, the work and the statistics, but I've got some more stats for you on this mystery knit along, which I think would be really interesting. So in total, this shawl had, with the extra border, had 89,403 stitches in total, which is just amazing. Look at all that work we do. The clue four with the border was a massive 29,306 stitches. Um, but without the border was only 12,620 stitches. So there really was an option for everyone in that border if you just wanted a, a quick and quick and easy way to finish it off and you're really happy with that shape, then that's great. A really lovely way to finish it off. Um, but with that, with those extra stitches in the massive border, it just, it became one of the biggest clue fours that there's ever been. It was 50% bigger than the average clue four in terms of the number of stitches all up. So it was just a massive, massive shawl. So um, in terms of the total stitches, it's the biggest mystery knit long shawl um, from all of 2019 to 2024. The next biggest, so this was 89,000 stitches, 403, and the next biggest was twists and turns at 86,894. So it does give you a sense that um, this shawl really is massive. <laughs> and if you've knit it and you've finished it, a, a huge well done because it really is an amazing amount of knitting and it is just results in the most beautiful shawl and there's absolutely no way that I could knit this size shawl in in this little time if not for the community and the um you know peer pressure <laughs> that the nice peer pressure that comes with the mystery knit along season so yes so how are you going on your shawl where are you up to maybe pop in in the comments have you finished or are you are you slogging away? Are you? Do you like to take your time? How are you going? So that's the that's the mystery knit along. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed um, these little videos. Let me know if you enjoyed the little episodes on the the mystery knit along by Stephen West. Now, something I did want to mention before I do go is that I'm running a new knit along with my friend Sian from The Obsessive Maker here on YouTube and on Instagram. And we are, after such a, a massive project like the Go Go Dynamo shawl, we are knitting a little summer tank um, because it's obviously moving into summer in Australia. So we are hosting the mini mock neck knit along. So it's we're knitting the mini mock neck tank by Jessie Made Designs. And we are running the, the knit along on Instagram and on Ravelry. There's a finished object thread um, that you'll find in the group for this podcast on Ravelry. The link for that finished object thread is below. There's also an FO thread for Sian in her um, group. Um, and you can also post on Instagram with the hashtag mini mock neck cal. Um, so join in it's running from oh well, it's already started it started on the 1st of November and it's running to the 31st of December so plenty of time to knit um, a lovely little tank for summer and so the yarn that I'm using for mine let me show you I'm holding it in a really really um, lovely project bag which I got from Louie and Lola yarns and it's thread and maple and I actually got it for the Knit for the Girls fundraising event that um, Karina runs. Really successful and great fundraising event. I think she raised, or everyone together raised, more than $45,000 um, for breast cancer research in Australia. So who says knitting doesn't change the world? Um, really well done to Karina and everyone on that fundraising event. 
but I'm making my mini mock neck tank in Maxi Moo Yarns, which is a Victorian hand dyer, Max. Um, and it's in the colorway Rainbow Road, which is this absolutely beautiful, heavily, heavily speckled yarn. It's in his Ultra Soft Sock base, which is 80% merino, 10% nylon, 10% cashmere. Um, and it is just beautiful. So I have two skeins of that. So I've wound one skein up. And I've started my, my tank, which is here. And those speckles, don't they just look amazing it's absolutely beautiful so that's the start of my mini mock neck tank i'm looking forward to um knitting that and for everyone to join in with sian and i as we knit ours and post on instagram with that with that hashtag and we'll get be able to have a nice tank uh, for when it gets really hot here in australia so that's all I had for this episode and I'm really pleased if you joined me for the four, the four mini episodes for the MCAL. I hope you enjoyed knitting it if you did or watching along if you didn't. Um, and I hope to see you in the next um, episode. So I'll be back to my normal podcast episodes soon. I haven't knit on much other than my shawl so I don't have much to show yet but maybe in a couple of weeks I'll jump on and share what I've been able to pick up after my shawl and what I've been able to get finished and what I've got on my needles at that point so looking forward to checking in with you again and until then happy making thanks